we're looking at them like, what are you doing here? They're looking at us like, what the fuck are you doing here? Uh, those little motel six rooms became our home. Because you walked in, and the desk was always the same. You had your little spot. And it was like that every time. So that was kind of cool. We just lived in a shitty house. It keeps people from straying away from the group. It keeps the group together. Because there is no distractions, Ken. There isn't shit, but a gas station may be around you. Hotel 6 is good, you know, like, Ty had us up at 10, out by 11, Cracker Barrel by 12, skating by 1. It was intense. Then we'd be out late. We'd stay out till 2 or 3 with the generators. The thing that makes a Motel 6 trip productive is just trap everybody. No way out. You are in the van. You're not going anywhere. You're not going back to the motel. Because unless you call a cab and you can figure out how to get back there, you are stuck all day with 10, 15 other skateboarders. You go from spot to spot to spot to spot to spot. After a while, you get tired of sitting there and you want to stand up, you want to stretch your legs, you want to skate a little bit. Pretty much it's productive out of just lack of options. You're either going to be sitting on your ass complaining or you're going to be rolling around like trying to figure out what you could do at that spot. You eat, sleep, drink, shit, skate together, and that's it. You're getting tired, you're getting sore, you're in the sun sometimes. It doesn't matter how tired you are, how sore you are, just drink a lot of water, hydrate, go to sleep, wake up, do some carol stretches, get in the car, go to Starbies, and go through the list of spots, let's go handle our biz, and try to keep that PMA up. It's Groundhog Day for a month straight. It wasn't like a big shock to me that we're like, you know, we're grinding it out pretty hard. As much hell as it was, people were getting footage. The main dudes that I really noticed that were just on fire were Guy Mariano and Mark Johnson at all times. No matter where we went, no matter what spot we went to, it was going down. There would be a time when you're on a trip in like a different city or something when it's just like you're battling this trick, right? And you know that you're only going to be there for one day. So it's now or never. Guy Mariano was, dude, straight soldier, dude, just like Mark. There was always like that backup from Guy. Always encouragement. He was either skating it with you or, you know, a little pat on the back or like pep talk and you want to give up and he's just like, no, no, you got it. You have to do this. You know, we're, we're just getting ready to go to war, man. It can get to the point where like, you know, sometimes some of the guys like we would try a trick for like, you know, three hours and it's just like, you know, you've just like sweated out everything you could sweat out and you're just like running on E. It's amazing, like, you know, and you've seen it with Mark, like with the willpower, it's like he won't give up. He, he will not give up. And it's like, you know, he, and that was a funny thing with people wanted to put that on to like Ty sometimes and be like, is Ty pushing Mark? It's like, no, Mark pushes himself by himself. After five hours of Mark trying that trick in Atlanta, some people didn't know if it was like safe for him to even be like rolling on the board towards that metal obstacle. It's just sketchy, you've been trying for I don't know how long, and then there's that little thing at the end, and he almost pretty much twisted his ankle like three or four times. And it was just like, one of these times is gonna be a bad one. When I saw him walking back like this, like, all tired, like, I was like, fuck, he's not gonna make it. Mark was that guy for like our team, you know what I mean? The one that never quit and the one that always got it. I mean, if Mark stepped up to try a trick, he was gonna land it. Yeah, Mark. <laughs>
One time we were eating inside this restaurant and these people came in, they're like, hey, is that your white van out there? Like, there's some, like, creepy dude, he's out there standing by it. Like, you know, I think he's going to break into it. So, like, we all, like, a couple dudes jump up and we all go out and look out there and it's, like, Rob sitting by the van, like, smoking a cigarette. And, like, we just start laughing. We're like, like, clean yourself up, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, people think they're trying to break into the van out there. Being a skateboarder, a lot of your balanced muscles are on the outside of your legs and they get really tight. <laughs> so I got this like foam thing that I kind of lay on, and it's like, it supposedly lengthens out your IT band. A foam roller is like, it's like a piece of foam. It's like, his is like that long, that round, you know what I mean? It's just a tube. Well, in his foam roller, he's just, you know, he, he, he blew out his knee. And so part of the rehab is the foam roller, which you roll on the side of your your leg right here, which it's called the IT band. Dude, fucking IT band is all fucked up. What are you talking about? After him having to go through knee surgery, he, he needed the foam roller in order to warm up to skate. Looks like he's trying to like, I don't know, make pizza dough with his leg or something. Dude, he would break the foam roller out anywhere. He'll foam roll on the, the dirtiest, like, black top, parking lot, hot. Who cares? So the, I mean, it's white foam, and, but it's become like the, the dingiest, dingiest thing ever. When finding a proper location for foam rolling, I'm basically looking for like a lawn without condoms, hypodermic needles, crack pipes, spit, chew, anything. It's any, pretty much anywhere that doesn't have any of that works just fine. This is fine. I could do this. This is, uh, hey, is AIDS-free. Hep C. Doubt it. And so it just became this just joke because he's always like, he's on his foam roller, but he's like smoking a cigarette on a foam roller. Like, you know, he's harming himself one way, but he's like trying to help himself in the other way at the same time. It just makes no sense. Every tour he was on, he had the foam roller, the same one, and he'd roll on the ground. If I like this, like the second tour or something, and he showed up with it, and it's the same foam roller, and he rolls on, on the ground, so it gets dirty, you know what I mean? The thing's like dirty. Sometimes people would like hide it, and he'd be like bummed. Like, dude, no, like, I need that thing. You can't fuck with a foam roller. He gets really bent out of shape if you fuck with a foam roller. Can I tell you the first time I've seen the roller? It was after uh, I was trying that nollie heel over the bump, and I'm pretty sure he offered me to use it, like, come on, roll it out, man, <laughs> roll it out, you just need to roll it out, and he, like, got on it, and he's just, like, doing his little thing on it, <laughs> it's so funny, dude, I'm like, what is this, dude? It actually really works, but you, when you bring it on a Motel 6 trip, you're gonna catch some, some grief. I just remember Rob was, like, he was rolling pretty dirty on some of those trips, it was, like, he was, He'd like skate super hard all day and like keep that same shirt on. It would just be like filthy, dirty black and the crazy dickies like super dirty, like with uh, flip flops on and foot spray all over him. His whole station in that van was by far the most like the gnarliest thing. He should have t totally been quarantined off. He's got bottles of piss. You know, if he's not smoking in the van, he's like spitting chaw or gnarliest athlete's foot athlete's foot spray and a dirty foam roller and just all on the station and shotgun and <laughs> it's so disgusting. On a Motel 6 people would be like you're eating gas station food all the time you're just throwing the trash on the floor you don't care people are like pissing in bottles you know you're taking shits outdoors at skate spots and you're just like living like an animal and then it's like you get home off of Motel 6 and it's like you pull into a gas station, you come out with this big bag of food, and you're like, what am I doing? Like, I'm at home. I don't eat like this. You gotta learn to kind of become human again. I remember one time with uh, Rob Welsh. We're in Santa Cruz, and we're in this, like, you know, nice, like, neighborhood, and he's, like, in his car peeing in a bottle and, like, dumping it out the window. And we're like, dude, we're not in the Midwest. We're not in some crazy town. We're, like, in a beautiful city. It's like, let that go. Like, that's Motel 6 shit. We watched this early rough cut that Ty put together, which was essentially like, if video came out today, this is what it would look like. And it wasn't that great. And it was kind of scary. It was like, this video is not going to live up to the hype. I just thought that it was like really, really far from being like a good video. I mean, it wasn't good. So I remember Guy, I can tell he was bummed. He was like, this video is not going to be that good, you know, if this is the way it's going. I thought that was it, you know, it was like three months. I was like, okay, like, 
crap, like I gotta get stuff going, you know, like when I saw